Hi everyone, David Mailer here, and today we're going to do the third part of this series on dealing with seasonality. Um, today what we're going to do is we're going to fit an ARIMA model and we're going to test it with a holdout set. Now in this case we did not have a control. That happens many times with smaller campaigns, marketing uh, digitally related campaigns. So in this case what we're going to do is we're going to hold back some of the data. So in this case if you've already seen the previous two videos you know that we have 52 weeks of data, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take out that 52 weeks and we're going to roll it back to maybe 40 weeks or something. And I'll show you that in a minute how we're going to do that. And what we'll do is we'll use the weeks one through 40 or whatever we use in here to be the main uh, training set. And then we have the holdout, which will be our test. We're going to test that against actual. So that's where you hear this training and testing set. So we're going to create this and test it based on that. So what I want to do is I want to show you first we're going to fit the ARIMA model. So we'll start here with first we're going to run this piece of code right here. This is where we determine the auto ARIMA model and so let's just hit enter there and what this does it gives you the PDQ values for the auto version the most likely version of your ARIMA model to work and be accurate. So in this case it says 000 which is fine. It could be anything here. But what we're going to do is we're going to go to the next one here, and what we're going to do is we're going to fit this one with the seasonality removed. So look at this. We're seasonal equals false. And um, what we want to do is we want to see what this does with the 0, 0, 0 in it. And we're going to do it with a lag max of 40. So let's do that. And what we have is we have a lag at, you can see right here, at 25. Okay? So what that means is we have to account for that. So what we want to do is we're going to put 25 right here. So instead of 0, 0, 0, and being that we used a difference of 2 earlier, we're going to use uh, 0 to 25, just like this. Now, if you had a difference of 1, it would be 0, 1, 25. So let's do this. And give it a second. My computer's a little bit slow. There we go. And you still see there's a lag at 25 or so right there. Now, this is not always going to be perfect. Sometimes you're going to have data like this where you have a smaller data set and it's highly volatile or high variance in it, which is what this Kratom sales data set is. It's from a local head shop that sells uh, Kratom, and it's only for their Kratom product. So it's not very, it's, there's not a lot of data there. So this won't be as accurate as it could be if I used it for a full uh, store or a uh, chain of stores. So I have used this actual model that we're building here with large stores with 1500 plus stores in them and it is it can be extremely accurate when you have a lot of data. You know it's not uncommon to have uh, 97.5 to 98.5 percent accuracy. We're not going to have that with this data set because this is a small and highly variant data set. Okay, but I, the main thing here is to show you the techniques that we use. So what we do is we go from that. This line here is where we actually take that deseasonalized data and we write it to the data frame, data 2A, and we're going to actually place it in there as this new field called deseasonal count. You won't see that here, but it just added it in there. So if I were to go to data 2A, I would now have that. So if I click on this... I now can see at the very end of that there's our deseasonalized count. Okay, so that's our sales that's deseasonalized. So I can then take that, export that to Excel and CSV or whatever I want to do with it and uh, graph it and do other stuff with it if I want it out there. A lot of people do that. Um, but I'm going to stay with it in here for now. So let's go here. And the, uh, underneath this, if you want to see, I also have a couple of other calculations in here. This is if I had transactions and units and uh, average basket or if I had those items I could then get you know this is how I would get the transactions units and average basket for that. If I want to know what someone's spend is, you know, how many items did they spend at that time at that transaction, what's their average, things like that. So next what I want to do is I told you I want to have a test where we're going to use a holdout set because I didn't have a control. Control is where they automatically have a group of people, a group of shoppers that they hold out and they don't get an offer and the rest do. And that's how they test it. Well, in this case, it's a small 
uh, subset. It's a small group of buyers, uh, Kratom sales for one head shop. They didn't have a control. So because of that, this is why we're doing this. So this code right here is going to give you the holdout. So basically what we do is we use the uh, function of Windows time series on the seasonal account which we created before and now this is where I told you it to, you can choose the weeks that you want so I'm using at week 41 is my breakout so prior to that is the one group and after that is my holdout okay so that's how that works and then this is where I'm gonna forecast it for 12 weeks based on that and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plot that and then so that's gonna plot oh, and I'll show you this let me just show you so you can actually, oops. All right, let's do this. And when I plot that, give it a second. My computer's running really slow today. I don't know why, but give it a second. Do, 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 do. Let's see here. Usually this prints out pretty quick. There we go. Okay, so what I did was see how this black line ends right here at week 41, basically a little bit after 40. That's So that's our actuals, and I stop there, and I'm actually creating a forecast based on it at that point okay so the data the real data from here to 52 is in that holdout it's held out now I'm going to bring it back in so when I bring this line right here lines of time series on our seasonal count and I bring that back in so let's just hit control and enter here and there it is that's our actual actuals in there on top of the forecast to see how close it is now keep in mind this is a small you um, set data set here so it's not going to be super super accurate the more data you have the better off you always are that's the way it is okay and I do have 52 weeks of data but it's only on Kratom sales which is highly variant okay I could go and difference this you know out to the wazoo and I'm still not going to get a very high accuracy on it so let's go back here Okay, once we've done that, I can also bring this in if I wanted to, and that is the moving average that we're using, okay, which is, you know, basically very close to the actuals in there, kind of averages out a little bit, the low spots and high spots, but let's, now let's go down below here. Next, what I want to do is I'm going to see, should I bring the seasonality back in? We did remove it earlier in the previous video. Should I bring it back in? So let's test that. This line of code right here says it's true let's bring back in the seasonality remember so false is it's out true is seasonality is in okay so we're gonna bring it back in and now we used an H equals 12 we could use that here I you know, let's just see what this is I don't know why I had 17 here but it doesn't matter um, basically bring the seasonality back in uh, looks pretty ugly um, and we can bring in both the moving average and the actuals and let's see what happens here how close are we well let's see yeah not really that good and a straight line is never a very good uh, uh, forecasting model to use so in this case clearly we're better off with our model that we created now um, what we want to do is we're going to go into further testing. Well, that's going to be in our next video. I'll go into this. We're going to do further testing. And uh, we're actually going to show you the final fit. And we're going to compare the different models. And then we're going to do uh, show you the accuracy. We're going to do some accuracy and measuring tests with some of the leading measures out there. And then we'll even write our data, the deseasonalized data, to a CSV file so that we could go and manipulate it more or delve more deeper into it if we wanted to in Excel or any other application that we wanted to uh, that's now for analysis. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful and useful. And the next one's really important because we're going to go into, as I said, further testing of our analysis here. Uh, final fit of our model. We're going to compare it against other models and we're going to show you the accuracy of it. And uh, then on top of that, we'll write it to a CSV file. So thanks again for watching. Please stay tuned for the next video and last part of this series. And uh, if you haven't already watched the first two parts, please go back and watch them. Uh, and they'll be helpful to go and refer back to to see you can follow this and see where we end up and how we did the different pieces of this. Basically, the whole premise of this uh, series here is to give you a project 
similar to ones that we actually use in data science and data analysis. And this one can be used uh, and has been used by several people that I know to get themselves jobs in data science. So it's a great project to have under your belt when you're presenting your resume to say, here, this is what I know how to do. Just make sure you use your own data, pick a data set that means something to you, and work through this whole thing. And you'll see it's not hard to do. And uh, this explains everything to you all the way out. And it's a complete data science project that can end up, as long as you use data, bigger data than I have here, with extremely high accuracy. As I've told you, I've ended up with 97.5, all the way up to about a 98.5, 90.7% accuracy, which is very high accuracy. Um, and uh, this is a great walkthrough, and it's very interesting to do. Uh, it also shows you what you can do with data. It's very interesting stuff. So thanks again for watching. Please subscribe and like, and have a great day.